Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we'll show you how to change out the KitchenAid mixer rear sleeve bearing. It's going to be a very easy repair and it should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at ApplianceParsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new rear sleeve bearing. The rear sleeve bearing is what the worm gear shaft rides in. The main reason you'll be changing it out is if it's failed and you're getting a squealing noise coming from the bearing in the shaft. In order to change the part, we have to open up the mixer. We're going to take off the accessories just to get them out of the way. You want to make sure the bowl is in the down position. And then we can reach in and take off the beater. All you have to do is lift up on it, turn it clockwise, and then let it drop down. You can pull it out. To get the bowl up, we're just going to lift it off the mounting pegs and pull it out. Now we're around at the back of the mixer. We're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to take out the screw that holds the trim on. Once you have the screw out, you can pull the trim off and set it aside. With the trim out of the way, we can use a Phillips screwdriver to take out the four screws that hold the cover on. There's two on this side and two on the other side. Once you have all four screws out, you can lift the cover off and set it aside. Now that we have the cover off, we can use the Phillips screwdriver to take out the two screws that hold the speed control board in place. Once you have both screws out, we're going to lift the board up and out of the way. We have to use a small flathead screwdriver to release the tabs that hold the little sensor in. Just have to press on each side and get them to release. Once you have both tabs released, you can pull the sensor out of the motor and then we can swing the speed control out of the way. If your mixer has the old transmission housing like ours does, the manufacturer recommends that you upgrade it to the metal housing because it's stronger. We're not going to show you in this video because that part has its own video. We're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to take out the four screws that hold the transmission cover down. Once you have all the screws out, we can lift the transmission housing off. Once you have the housing off, we can lift up on the worm gear so we can take the rear sleeve bearing off. All you have to do is pull it off the shaft once you have it out of the housing. Once you have it off, you can just set the worm gear down and pull the rear sleeve bearing off the mixer. Here's the old rear sleeve bearing next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. To put the new rear sleeve bearing on, you want to make sure that the side with the shorter flange is towards the gear. We can just lift up on the worm gear and slide it on. Once you have it in place, there's a flat side on each side. You just want to make sure that those are vertical so everything lines up when you set it down into the housing. Once you have it in place, we can put the housing back on. All you have to do is line it up and flip it over. Once you have it lined up, you can push it down into place. If it won't go down all the way, you may have to turn this little hub attachment right here so it lines up with the beveled gear. Once you have it in place, we can use a Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in to hold it down. Once you have the housing back on, we can remount the speed control board. I'm just going to lift it up and plug in the sensor. It can only go one way. Just make sure it clips into the motor and stays in place. Once you have it there, we can rotate the board over and line it up with the screw holes. Once you have it in place, we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Once you have the speed control back in place, we can put the cover back on the mixer. I'm just going to line it up and set it down in place. Once you have it in place, we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put in the four screws. Now 
Now that we have the cover back on, we can put the trim ring on. We're just going to set it in place, and then we can go around back and use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screw in to hold it on. Once you have the trim ring on, we can put the bowl back on. To put the bowl back on, we're just going to line up the pins on each side. Once you have it in place, you can push down on the back to snap it in. Once you have it in place, we can put the beater back on. To put the beater back in, we're just going to line it up on the shaft and uh, make sure the pin goes into the cutout and lift it up into place. Turn it counterclockwise to lock it on. Once you have it in place, we can plug the mixer back in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.